Hi, my name is Jamal Jackson, and I'm the CEO and managing attorney of Jackson Corporate Law Offices. I first want to take the time to say thank you for watching this video. This is the first of a three-part session over corporate branding and trademarks. Now, over the course of these three sessions, here's what we're going to talk about. Understanding what a trademark is, learning how to search for a trademark, understanding the different levels of trademark protection, identifying the strength of your trademark, and understanding how to adequately protect your trademark once it's registered. Now, for today, we are just going to focus on what is a trademark, what are the different levels of protection, and how do you search for a trademark to ensure that the trademark that you're choosing to enter into the marketplace with is not already taken. So first, what is a trademark? So a trademark is a word, phrase, symbol, and or design that identifies and distinguishes the source of goods of one party from those of others. And that is the, 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 the definition as identified by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So in other words, in other words, it's your branding. So it's how do people see your product or service in the market? How do they interpret your brand? So it's their their viewpoint, their perception of who you are as a company, as a product, as a service. And so these are some typical examples of what a, uh, a trademark or a brand would look like. So you have Starbucks, you have Apple, YouTube, and Nike, all very popular within the marketplace. Now, why do trademarks matter? Well, trademarks, they do a few things, but the most important is that they allow you to carve out a manner of distinguishing your goods from somebody else's. So, it allows somebody to know that your product is yours based on your logo, based on your um, your name, based on certain designs or patterns or shapes that are that are always included in your um, product or service. And then on top of that, it also gives you legal recourse if somebody is to if somebody were to infringe on your intellectual property or your trademark. So. Let's say you're using a logo and a name and somebody else pops up across the, across the state or across the nation and they um, engage in a similar service under the same name or the same logo. Um, it gives you protection in that, uh, in that case. And you can go and you can uh, get what's called an injunction or you can sue for monetary damages depending on how bad the infringement is. So these are the different levels of trademark protection, the different types of trademark. You have common law, state, federal, and international. So common law trademark, uh, usually identified by this TM that you see here, uh, there's no registration required for that. That is the basic level of trademark protection. And you receive this protection based on just using the product or service in commerce. And in commerce means that you're actually, you actually have clients, you're, you're marketing, you are taking in um, money based on the use of that, uh, of that trademark in connection with your goods or services. So this is, this receives the, <clears throat> the least amount of protection. So it's limited to geographic scope. So for instance, if you operate a coffee shop in Chicago and you're utilizing your trademark, you would pretty much re uh, receive protection in the greater Chicago land area. Um, could be a little, uh, the geographic scope could be a little bit wider depending on how widely known you are as a company. Next, you have state registration. So for the state registration, you register with uh, the Secretary of State. Uh, and this gives you statewide protection. So if you register within the state of Illinois, um, you will have protection within the state of Illinois from anybody else who would attempt to use that trademark. And this has an asterisk beside it because um, in part three, what we'll do is we'll discuss uh, the, the uh, I guess, the battle between uh, a federal trademark and a state trademark. So um, the price for this varies. Uh, so in Illinois, it costs $10, so relatively cheap to register but it gives you protection that is a little bit greater than the uh, common law protection, which just, which just protects you in your geographic scope. Now, federally registered trademarks, those are the, the most common ones that, that individuals use and go after. And so this is identified by the use of the R that's in the circle that you see down here. Now, this is governed by the Lanham Act, uh, which uh, states that if you once you register, with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, you receive protection on a nationwide level. Now, um, once you register, it puts everybody on notice that you are the owner of that mark, and everyone is assumed to know that they are unable to utilize that mark. Now, when you register federally, uh, you have to use your mark in commerce before they will complete your application. So um, in part two, we're going to go over actually registering your application. but 
in order to receive a federal trademark and, and or a state or a state trademark, you have to use your product or service. You have to already be using your product or service to trademark, meaning it can't just be an idea. It can't just be something that you want to do. It has to be something that you've actually started to use, actually started to um, put out there for the public to see. Now, if you don't, if you haven't already started using it in commerce, then for, on a federal level, and again, which we'll talk about in part two, is there is what's called an intent to use application that you can file. Now, the cost for registering a federal trademark is a little bit more expensive, so it's either two twenty-five or two seventy-five per class. And a little bit later, or I'm sorry, in part two, we'll go over um, what classes are and the difference in the costs of two twenty-five or two seventy-five. Um, now, an international trademark. Because we all know that the world is flat and that the world is getting smaller and smaller with globalization, there, uh, there have been steps that have been taken, laws that have been enacted that, will, that allow you to protect your trademark, not only here um, uh, in the United States or domestically, but also internationally. Uh, so in 1996, the Madrid Protocol was passed, and that established the WIPO organization or the World Intellectual Property Organization, that which which pretty much governs and polices trademarks on an international scale. There are 90 countries that currently participate, and this, uh, and, and through the international application, you are able to pick and choose which countries you want protection in. Now, there is a cost that is associated with, get, with receiving protection in these other countries, but if you're going to be doing, um, if, if you're engaged in shipping, if you are uh, engaged in e-commerce or any sort of digital service in which you have a, a major presence in a particular country abroad, this is one of those one of the um, levels that you might want to look into. So again, the cost for this varies, and we'll go over that cost um, in part two. And so these are the different levels of trademark, depending on what you're doing and depending on how expansive you want your business to be. Uh, you can pick and choose which level you want, uh, which level of trademark you want to be at. Um, the federal trademark is always the, the safest. The international trademark is good if you're going to be doing um, anything abroad. If you are going to operate one brick and mortar store and not really looking to expand, then maybe you look into the common law trademark or the state uh, or the state trademark. Now, now that you know the different levels of trademark. Before you go in and brand yourself, one thing that is important to do is actually search for the availability. You don't want to end up or you don't want to end up registering a business and starting to use a logo or a name in commerce only only to receive a cease and desist letter from someone who's already carved out the rights of usage for that intellectual property. So here's what you want to do. You want to search. If it's a business name, you want to start with the state registration. So you start with searching the Secretary of State website. So as you can see, for Illinois, it's called CyberDriveIllinois.com. Um, you come down here and you click on business. And then from there, it'll bring up this little menu and you go to corporate um, slash LLC search. And uh, when you go to the search, it allows for you to type in a name. So I just typed in our law office, Jackson Corporate Law Offices, and this is what it brings up. So it shows that we are the only company in the state of Illinois that's registered with that name. Now, if we go back and we just enter in Jackson, rather than Jackson Corporate Law Offices, making, a lot, making it a lot less specific, then you get every company in the state of Illinois that has Jackson in its name. So when you're doing this, Mark, you want to um, be a little bit general, uh, run a few searches, be a little bit general, then be very specific just so that you know what all is out there. Now, next, you want to search the United States Patent and Trademark uh, website. They have a database for all of the federally registered trademarks. So this is USPTO.gov. So as you can see here, this is what the, the website looks like. So once you go on the website, you click on the, the trademarks, or you hover uh, above the trademark section, and it brings down this drop-down list. And you go and click on Search and Trademarks. And from there, it'll take you to this page. So once you're at this page, you can either click up here or you click down here. It, it takes you to the same system to, to search. Now, for, for your first time, uh, and the, the easier searching option to use is just the basic word mark search. So you go in and, um, and you, enter your, uh, you enter the name that you're looking for. So we're going to use Blue's Gourmet Suite. So this is a client of ours that gave us permission to utilize them in this exercise. So Louis Gourmet Suites um, is the trademark that we're going to look up. So if you put that in and you hit enter, 
you'll see that they are the they're record one of one. Um, and with something that specific, they're going to be record one of one, one of one. So they are the only company that is able to use this. And this is the logo that they that the trademarks. Um, um, with the so with, what you can do is you can see the the class. You can see what they um, what they actually do and. When we talk about classes, we'll see that when you submit a trademark, when you register a trademark, you aren't protected from anyone in any industry using that name. You're protected from people entering into those certain classes and offering similar goods or services um, under that name or logo that you have trademarked. Um, it gives you all of the information that you need. And again, if we go back and we just type in lose, um, then you get everything that uh, every name, every federally registered trademark that has blues within the name. So when in doubt, Google it. Um, the search is very important, again, because it takes a lot of time and effort to brand yourself, to create a, a trademark, to create a logo. Uh, and you don't want to expend all of that effort only to receive a cease and desist letter and have to um, either rebrand or go to court in order to try and assess your rights. So this is the first step to branding, the first step to getting your business off the ground or your or your new product or service off the ground. Do the trademark search, understand the different levels of, of uh, trademark protection, and um, when in doubt, speak to an attorney because this, this is this is very very important for uh, for protection for building recognition. Um, so that is the end of the first session. And again, my name is Jamal Jackson. I'm the CEO and managing attorney of Jackson Corporate Law Offices. If you have any questions about the topics that we covered today, all of my information is below. In our next section, in our next session, we are going to actually go over the registration process and what does it take in order to register a trademark. And then in part three, we're going to go over how do you maintain that trademark protection? Because once you get a trademark, it doesn't always, it's not automatic that you're going to have that protection forever. There are certain steps that you have to take to ensure that you don't lose that trademark protection. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And I hope that you I hope that you learn something from this and I hope that you tune in to part two, um, which will be coming up shortly. Thank you.